we'll just do a little bit of a standing warm-up. Um, so, you're just going to stand on your mat. We're going to just look down at our feet, double check that they are parallel, hip width apart. We've got softness in our knees, a little tuck of the pelvis, some nice openness across the shoulders, and we're growing nice and tall through the back of the spine, through the back of the head. And then I just want you to close your eyes. You don't need to see. You can just listen to the sound of my voice and take some big deep breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. I'm sorry to interrupt, but Kirsty Barclay, can you just let me know if you've got everything sorted? Um, I don't want you to miss out again. Just type it into the chat for me. All right, sorry, back to where we were. In through the nose and out through the mouth. Two more times, just big deep breath in and out. Fill up all of your lungs, fill your ribs up, fill your tummy up, just let it all expand. Okay, so now we're gonna just add some arm movements to our breath. So you're gonna reach down and then breathe your air in. And then you're gonna push it forwards out. And again, scoop it up, inhale. Yay, Kirsty, exhale. And again, reach down, breathe it all in. And push it out. One more time, breathe it all in. I know you probably feel like a dick, but this is just a really good stress relieving technique. And exhale. And at least we're all being dicks together, right? Okay, so this time we're gonna breathe it in. And then we're gonna shake it off. And again, breathe it in and shake it off. And you really want your voice to be quite audible with your breath. And shake it off. One more time. And shake. Awesome. All right, reach up to the sky, big deep breath in. Flex those wrists and sweep your arms around and down. And again, breathe in. Flex and exhale. Listen to all the crunchy noises. Flex and exhale. One more time. And awesome. Interlace fingers behind the head. Take a breath in. On your exhale, leaning over to the right hand side and inhaling back up and exhaling the opposite way and inhaling back up and again exhale to the right and inhale up and exhale to the left and inhale back up one more time we're going to go over to the right we're going to stay here, lengthen out this other arm, and then do a big circle with your other arm. So if you can keep the flexed hand while you circle, please try to. If this is feeling too sore for anyone, just make it smaller. Don't lean as far. Keep some softness through your knees. Keep some support through your tummy. One more time. Nice. Okay, and then both hands back behind the head, and then we're upright. Deep breath in, and other side, exhale. Soften those knees, re release the arm, and then big circles, in through the nose, out through the mouth. And remind what timing your breathing, breath, breathing, <laughs> your breathing happens on. Just whenever, but make a big, big, big circle with your hand, as big as you can. Last one. Okay, and then both hands behind the head and back to the top and release. Awesome. Okay, one more time. We're going to do that breathing in through the nose. And we're going to shake it off. And again, inhale. Shake off the stress. One more time. Shake it off. Awesome. Okay, cool. 
So now we will go to lying down on the ground. Get yourselves sit up. And I will too. So if you have a pillow, um, I would suggest just having that handy nearby. It's just a really great way of um, making things a little bit more comfy for us. And particularly for anyone who has um, upper back roundness, and especially like just from the work that we've been doing, we're all a little bit tight in there anyway. So I would suggest having the pillow under your head just for some extra support. Okay, awesome. So now we're just lying. Let's make sure we're in crook lying, feet are parallel. Knees are tracking into the hip bones. You've got a beautiful elongated spine. You could do a little moment to bridge your hips up, bridge your hips back down and just let your body settle. And then relax <laughs> shoulders, arms down on the ground and taking a moment to close your eyes again. You shouldn't need to see <laughs> Breathe with me. I think someone who maybe just joined turned their um, audio on. Do you mind just looking in the bottom left corner and checking that it says mute? That would be awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, so we're breathing in through the nose again and out through the mouth. And as you breathe in, you really want to let your tummy rise. So normally for our Pilates breath, we're trying to breathe into these ribs. For today, let's just breathe as deep as we can into our belly, in through the nose, out through the mouth. And again, in through the nose, out through the mouth. And one more time. And then we're going to float both arms up into the sky above us. And you're going to reach your arms up, inhaling as you reach. And exhaling as you sink your shoulders back down. And again, inhale up. And exhale down. And two more times. Inhale up. And exhale down. Try not to bend your elbows, just keep them nice and elongated. Good, and then we'll turn palms away from us and on the exhale now, we'll let the hands wander backwards behind us, let them rest as much as they will, and then inhale back up to the top. Exhale as we come back and down. And inhale back up to the top. If there's anyone who's tr having trouble hearing me and you've got your volume up as loud as you can, can you just comment so I know that I need to talk louder if possible? Thank you. Exhale back. Inhale up. One more time, we're going back on the exhale. And then we're just going to stay here and take a couple of deep breaths again. Fill up the lungs as much as you can. And then we're going to sweep the arms sideways, arrive in a T position, have a breath in. And now on your exhale, let one hand come across your chest, allow your knees to flop to the side, reach all the way along your fingertips, up into the sky, and then wait for the weight of your arm to pull you backwards onto your back in a bit of a hurry, right? So you reach your arm across your chest, you go past your fingers up into the air and then I'm letting this arm droop for as long as I can before it kind of quickly pulls me back. If that feels too much on your body, you can always just return to your back really nice and slowly. But try this out first and then just see how you go. Should feel quite lazy. Nice. One more time each way. I'll do a slow version, a controlled version, so you can see what the difference looks like. Awesome. Okay. 
So then we're just back on our backs with our arms in T position, just readjusting so we're nice and um, uh, crook lying, nice and parallel. And then this time we're just going to allow the knees to fall to one side, just as far as they will. Try and rest the underneath knee if you can. This one is always flopping up and down in the air. And then bring it back. Same thing the other way. Gently guide your knees over. Let them rest as much as they will. Deep breath in and then use your exhale to bring them back. Over to the other side. Deep breath in. Exhale, re-engage through the tummy to come back. And other way. Deep breath in. And exhale. Last one each way. And one more time. So good, awesome. Okay, so we're just going to sit in the center, rocking the knees from side to side in just a much smaller way. Just getting a little bit of looseness across the back of the sacrum. And then we're going to grab the knees, one in each hand, and just rock the knees from side to side like so. Just letting that lower back really loosen up. Then let's take your hands on top of your knees and we'll draw circles with your knees. Keep breathing. <laughs> just wandering my way down my mat and then reverse your direction. Awesome, okay, cool. So we won't have the pillow now because we're gonna go into a little bit of bridging work um, combined in with some abs. So we're just gonna be changing between the two. Um, I want you to make sure that your feet are just a good hip width apart, right? Ah, oh, sorry, I lied to you. Can you grab back your pillow? Can you put it in between your knees? We're just going to use it for a little bit of extra inner thigh work um, and just to help you with your tracking because I know Kirsty Blackway is watching this video. All right, so you've got your shoulders nice and relaxed, your hands down by your thighs. You're going to take a breath in to prepare. And then on your exhale breath, you're going to engage through your pelvic floor, through your corset muscle, and then squeeze on your pillow. So your knees are squeezing together. And then we're just going to release all of that. And repeat, exhale, engage the tummy, and then squeeze the knees, and then release. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, engage your TVA, then squeeze your knees, and then release. And one more time, engage the tummy, squeeze the knees, and relax. All right, so Anna, when you do this one, I want you to keep a straight spine as you lift your hips into the air. Anyone who has disc issues, that's for you. Otherwise, we're trying to curl through the spine. So we inhale, prepare. We exhale, engage the tummy, engage the knees, and then we squeeze through the glutes. We tuck through the pelvis and we float the hips into the air. Got lots of weight through our heels. You can check by lifting your toes, breathing in. And then we're exhaling to curl the spine back down, trying to go bone by bone by bone, all the way rippling through your spine and then releasing back into a nice neutral and relaxing the knees to repeat. Breathe in. Exhale, engage your tummy, engage your knees, then tuck your pelvis. Find your glutes, make them squeeze. You can always poke and prod them with your fingers if you need to. Double check you haven't pushed up so high that you're in a back bend, that you're slightly tucked under. You're in an under curve, we call it. And then exhale to curl the spine slowly back down again, bone by bone by bone. 
and release when you arrive. Cool. We're going for four more, and I'll give you an example of your version. So we engage the tummy, we engage the knees, we squeeze the glutes, but then we just lift the hips. And you can keep it a small range so that your spine stays very straight, your pelvis stays very level to the ground, and then we lower the spine back down straight again. So this is just about strengthening glutes and hamstrings for you. Exhale back to the original version. I'm tucking under, I'm squeezing using the bum to lift, breathing in at the top, and then exhaling as we curl slowly, slowly, slowly back down. All right, so now I want you to float your arms up into the sky, and we're going to repeat with our arms in the air. Exhale as we engage tummy and inner thighs, tuck pelvis, squeeze the glutes, float the hips, breathe in at the top. Exhale, curl the spine down or lower your straight spine down depending on the variation you're doing and release at the bottom. Good, two more of those. Exhale, engage the tummy, engage the glutes, tuck the pelvis, slowly lift the hips, breathe in. And exhale to slowly lower back down. One more time, then we're going for a variation. Exhale, re-engage abs and knees, tuck the pelvis, really don't forget about that cushion. You wanna squeeze tightly in on it the whole time. Exhale as you lower spine back down. Good, then have a breath in when you arrive back in your neutral and use your exhale to float chin to chest, ribs to hips, hands up into your ab prep position and then we lower back down. We bridge the spine back up into the air, just going slightly quicker, breathe in. Exhale, curling down and on the end of your exhale, float the head. Inhale, back down. Exhale, bridge the hips into the air. Breathe in at the top. Exhale, curl the spine down, bone by bone by bone. And at the end of that exhale, you're coming up. Inhale, return. Exhale, re-engage to lift. Breathe in at the top. Exhale, curl the spine back down, bone by bone by bone. Up into ab prep. Inhale, back. One more time, exhale to tuck, squeeze the glutes, float the hips, and then we'll stay here. So we're gonna do a little series of squeezing on the pillow. So you're just gonna squeeze in, and two, and three, and four, nice, five, and six, and seven, and eight. Bridge the spine back down, bone by bone by bone. Inhale, prepare, exhale, float up. And then tiny pulses up here for eight, seven, six, five. If anyone is sore in their head, you can always put a hand behind your head, lower it down. Repeat, exhale, engage the glutes, and lift the hips. We're squeezing the knees in one and two, nice, three and four. Keep breathing, five, relax your shoulders, seven and eight. Curl down with control, take a deep breath in. Exhale to come up into ab prep and pulsing, eight and seven, six, four, three, two, one, and back down. One more round, really good job, guys. Exhale, squeeze the glutes, float the hips into the air, hold, breathe in. Exhale, we're pulsing, eight and seven, nice, six and five, good, four and three and two and one, curling the spine back down. Big deep breath in. Exhale to come up and tiny pulses, eight and seven, six and five, four, three, two, one, and lower to rest. Really nice work. So we're gonna take that pillow out now. We're gonna put it underneath our pelvises and just get straight into some more lower ab conditioning. Um, so ball under your pelvis is there to provide extra instability, so you have to work a little bit harder. Um, if you, sorry, just wanted to double check, there was no comments. If you have, you know, disc issues like Anna, you want your pelvis to still be really level to the ground. You don't want to put it too low so that you're tucked under. Um, however, if you're the opposite, if you've got like quite a sore lower back at the moment or you haven't done this in a wee while, I would suggest putting the um, a little bit cushion, <laughs> sorry, a little bit lower so that you're encouraged into a slight imprint, okay? 
So find your position. If you've got no issues, then it should just be directly underneath you like mine is, okay? And then we're gonna take a moment to just readjust, make sure the head feels comfy. Um, if anyone has kyphosis, you could have a second pillow under your head right now. Deep breath in. Exhale, re-engage through the corset muscle. And then we'll just float one leg into tabletop, hold and breathe in. We'll exhale, pull the tummy in more and float the second leg up. Hold and breathe in. Exhale as we return one leg back down. Hold and breathe in. And exhale to return the other. So we're taking it quite slow. Let's go again. Exhale, engage the tummy, pick up one leg. Hold to breathe in. Exhale as we pick up the second leg. Hold to breathe in. Exhale to return one leg back down. Hold to breathe in. And then the other. Good. Now float your arms into the sky and repeat. Exhale, one leg comes up. Maybe start with the other leg. Hold and breathe in. Hold and breathe in. Exhale down. Hold and breathe in. And exhale down. Nice. One more round. Just staying really attentive to your tummy. We just really don't want to make, we want to make sure there's no doming happening. So just running your hands across your tummy whenever you need to, feeling the center and just making sure the center is not poking out when you lift up that second leg. So last one, one leg comes up, we hold and breathe in and then the other. Nice, okay, arms are still in the air. We're gonna take your right leg, lengthen it away. Breathe in to return. Then your left, exhale. And how to return. Cool, so we're going to continue with this. Remember, you can decide how high or how low you want to stretch that leg because you've got to make the decision wise to your own body and what's going on. So I always like have a hand on my tummy to check my abs, and as I run my fingers in and out, I should feel a hard flatness underneath that stomach punch that I have, <laughs> um, which feels like the muscles are hard and flat, right? But if I'm doming, then it'll feel like my muscles have poked up towards the sky and I can feel this really obvious little mountain. So I'm trying to avoid that at all costs. Um, and if, it, if you are doming, take your leg higher so that you're just not working quite so hard and you have a better chance of doing this well. All right, we're just gonna start to add in arms. We exhale, stretch, same arm as leg. Inhale, return. Exhale, same arm as leg. Inhale, return. We're keeping that rib tip connection going. If this is still feeling too much for someone, then you could have your legs on the ground, right? And just be stretching away one leg and arm from the floor. And that is totally valid. That is totally difficult enough as it is. And you're really concentrating a lot on keeping that rib to hip connection. So the reason we're moving the arms is because that's really tempting for you to then start flaring your ribs, which we don't want to do. We want to try and keep those all nice and controlled. Okay, so stop back in your position. If you've got your legs in the air, you're back in tabletop. Have a breath in. Exhale as you come up, chin to chest, ribs to hips. We'll add a little set of pulses here for eight, seven, six, five, four. Mind my shaky voice. And one. Now we're going to repeat the same exercise. Just exhale, one arm, one leg stretches. Inhale, return. Exhale, other arm, other leg. Inhale, return. This is really good strengthening for your neck, but if it's feeling too much for anyone, then you could just have your hands behind your head consistently and just be working on the legs. And remember, you totally have that option to have your legs returning to the floor and just maintaining your head up in the air if need be. So we're going to go for another four. Return. And return. And exhale. Return. The last one. Return, final set of pulses, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Return upper body with control, return legs with control one at a time, and then you get to relax. Yay!
Oh, as you can see, I do a lot of teaching of Pilates and not a lot of doing of Pilates myself. <laughs> so that is nice and difficult for me, just that tiny little bit. Um, okay, so let's give our abs a tiny break. We're going to roll onto our side and get into some glute work. Um, I would recommend a pillow underneath your head, right? So you, re you lengthen out your underneath arm, put the pillow in, and then your head rests on top of that. Then we've got heels in underneath your sitting bones, hopefully. If you have a wall behind you, this is super helpful because all you do is get your arm, the back of your head, oh my god, where is the wall, and the back of your pelvis to connect with the wall and then your feet as well. And then you know you're all aligned. Um, but obviously if you don't have that, just look up over your bum and figure out whether your feet are underneath your sitting bones, like that. Okay, top hand on your top hip. At the moment, my waist is lying on the floor. I want to push my waist down so that I get um, a nice little gap underneath me. And then we turn on the corset muscle. We have a moment to float the feet and we breathe in. On the exhale breath, we open the top knee up towards the sky. Just good old clamshells. Inhale as we lower down. And again, exhale on the lift. Inhale on the lower. Very nice. So what's really important to me is that you keep that waist lengthening. So if I sink into this position here, then I instantly start working different muscles and I don't want that to happen. So push it out or take a hand underneath your waist and just double check all throughout the exercise that you've got that little gap underneath you. The other thing that's important is that you feel this butt muscle firing. So what I do is I take my thumb and I dig it into my butt muscle and I push on the muscle while I'm opening the legs and closing them. And then you know, I can feel underneath my finger that that muscle is definitely firing, it's definitely turning on. And I can also just start to recognize it with my brain a bit more. This is a way that we can enhance the connection from your brain to your muscle. Your neurological pathways get stronger to that muscle. Okay, so you're probably wondering, when are we going to stop clam shelling? <laughs> Let's go for one more. Let's open and hold. Take a breath in. Double check that we're really tall through the spine. And then pulse. Eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, and hold. Keep breathing. Second set. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and hold. Third set. Eight, seven. Is your tummy still working to hold you? Are, are you still lifted with your waist? And hold. Fourth set, eight and seven, nice, six and five, four and three and two and one, and you can lower back down. Oh, so good. Rest your top knee on top. Give your bum a wee punch just for a little bit of a break. Then we're going to go into a second set, which has long legs. So um, anyone who is just feeling like that was enough, you could feel free to just stop now and have a stretch. That's totally fine. Um, otherwise, if you want to challenge yourself, bottom leg long, or if you don't, bottom leg slightly bent. Top leg nice and long in line with your body. So if I look, I can see it directly underneath me. Um, slash my foot disappears, right? Then let's add a flexed foot. I'm just going to scooch up the, up the mat, sorry. And double check that you've got that elongated top hip. You've got the waist. All right. So we want to keep the flexed foot and also internally rotate it. So I've twisted my upper thigh inwards. Now this top leg is going to go backwards and up into the air and then come back to where it started. Again, exhale back and up and back to where it started. Exhale. Nice. So in this exercise, because we're going behind you, you're going to be really tempted to kind of counterbalance by shifting this shoulder forwards. I want you to make sure that that doesn't happen. Um, we're trying to make you look as if you're lying on your side. So you want your shoulders to be really square. And I always have, with my top hand on my hip, my elbow directly vertical of me. All right, so we've got two more. You should definitely be feeling this butt kicking in already. Make sure you haven't lost your internal rotation. 
All right, and then we're gonna go back and up, hold it there, pulse backwards for eight, seven. Really think about core now. You've gotta make sure that that's working to stabilize you. Three, two, and one. And now up, up, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one and release awesome cross that knee again give your bum a wee rub give it some love i promise you that we will stretch a big stretch after for your bum but let's just smash out the other side now how's everyone doing sorry that i'm so disheveled with my hair falling out are you surviving hopefully Alrighty, let's go other arm long, resting. Am I gonna kick the wall? No, perfect. And can I still see? Yes. All right, so just to recap, heels underneath sitting bones. Tick, hand on top hip, elongated, pocket of air under waist, awesome. And thumb digging into the top muscle up here. Feet float into the air. We take a breath in to prepare. And then on the exhale, squeeze the glutes, sorry, squeeze the heels together as you open, inhale as you close. And again, exhale to open, inhale to close. And exhale, open, inhale, close. Awesome. So I'm just gonna start to go slightly faster because we had about 16 of these to get through. So I'm just waiting on an email back from Asho, but um, hopefully she's going to either teach Monday or Wednesdays if you're interested in doing a Zoom class with Asho. If you've never tried a class with her before, it's definitely worth your while. She's been teaching Pilates for about 25 years, so she has a lot of experience. Let's stay, and then we'll do our pulses. One, two, oh my God, this is my weak glute, and I'm going to struggle so bad on this side. Two, and one, hold, breathe in. And exhale, go again, eight and seven. Isn't it nice to know that us Pilates instructors are not machines <laughs> and that we also have our own issues? Hold and go again, eight, seven, six. Even though we demand quite a lot from you most of the time, two and one. Hold and last one, eight, seven, six. Oh my god, five. Oh, I'm struggling, guys. Give me some support. Two. And one, all right, oh, release. Oh my gosh, give your bum a wee rub. You're doing awesome, even though I can't see you, I'm sure you are. Awesome, okay. So now we have this elongated version. Reminder that you can keep this leg bent if you want it to be slightly easier, or you can lengthen it long if you want it to be more about the stability of your abs. So top leg, if you can flex the toes and rotate them inwards and really push that foot away from you as far as you can. So it drags your hip down and then you automatically get the waist. Then breathe in and on your exhale breath, we're going back and up, back to where I started. Back and up, back to where I started. Back and up, back to where I started. And back and up. Nice. So keep going. We've got four more of these. Obviously, butt work is hard in general, and it's good to have a nice, strong, healthy bum, especially if you've got a bad back. But if this is just feeling too much for anyone, please just feel free to take a break. Do your favorite butt stretch. Oh, hi, hello. Whoever just joined, your video was turned on, so you should probably turn that off in the bottom left-hand corner. Um, and then we stay. And then we do pulsing backwards. Yes, eight, seven, six, five. Nice, well done, you figured it out. Three, two, oh, it was Anne. Hi, Anne. And then up instead. Three, four, and four, three, two, one. And now we get to break. Yay, thank goodness. <laughs> Give your bum again another wee rub. 
So my friends, now it's time to stretch. Um, we want to do whatever stretch works best for you, for your glutes. So for me, that's definitely the pretzel. You lie on your back, you cross one leg over. First option is just to push your knee away from you and see if you feel a stretch through that butt. Then second option is to grab your leg and pull it in. If anyone really struggles with that, like they need their foot off the floor but they can't hold on to it, find a wall that's nearby you, put your feet up on the wall and then cross your ankle. This is like heaven, honestly. You just don't have to hold on with your arms so you get to relax. Um, so that's my suggestion. Otherwise, you've got your pigeon stretch that you could be doing. Um, just making a mess here. That's this one. One leg in front, other leg back behind, drop down onto your elbows. And then if none of those are good for you, there's another one seated where you just cross one knee over the other leg and then you use opposites, so your left hand to grab your right knee. And you pick it up off the floor and you pull it in nice and tight. So that is not about twisting your spine like a yoga twist. That's all about um, making sure that you pull it in tight so that you get the butt stretch. So you should still be on your first side. Don't rush through this because we did lots of glutes. So we want to do lots of stretching too to make sure we don't just put heaps of tightness into your bum. So um, still on your first leg, keep breathing into it for me. We'll be here for like another 20 seconds. Um, it's fine to do like a little gentle rock in and out of the stretch if you need to, but um, you want to make sure that you're not like bouncing your muscles whenever you stretch. So gentle rock feels quite different to, for example, like, ah, stretching further, further. Good working, who is that from? I don't know, anyway. <laughs> um, let's go on the other side now guys, well done. So just swap yourself over, whatever stretch you're doing, get yourself set up on the other side and we'll breathe into that for about a minute and a half. We want to be here, a minute and a half to two minutes. I don't actually like that one today, change my mind. All right, well done. Let's release slowly through there. So we're gonna go back to lying on our backs. We're gonna do a little bit more ab work, I know, and then we're gonna get onto our tummies and do some extension work, okay? So if you have another wee lie down and then get yourself as comfy as you need to, even though your head's gonna be off the ground. Interlace your fingers behind your head for me. Double check that you're nice and released in a neutral pelvis, and then elevate your elbows slightly. Let's take a breath in here. On the exhale breath, engage the tummy, pull out the head up, chin to the chest, ribs to hips. Breathe in, and then exhale as you bring up one leg at a time into your tabletop. Okay, 
So on your next exhale breath, we're going to stretch away one of your legs and then we're going to rotate towards the bent one, coming back into the center. Same thing the other way. Exhale to stretch and rotate and inhale to return. Going nice and slow. Exhale, stretch, rotate and inhale to return. If that's feeling too much for anyone, go back to the floor with your foot in between each side. So try really hard to keep your head up as you're just rotating across. You want that to feel like your rib comes toward your hip bone. And then you should really feel like you're getting higher each time that you rotate. So we're going for another four. I urge you not to race through this. Going slower makes you work harder. And the last one, we're gonna go back to the original side and then we're gonna add some little pulses forwards. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Back to center, other way, and again. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. One more round on each side, here we go. And eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Last one, and eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and return. Yes, awesome work. Grab your knees, give them a cuddle. So good. While you're resting, I'm just going to read these comments. We heard from Rachel, keep thinking of friends overseas, thinking of you today and inspired. It inspired my husband to stretch as well. Oh, that's so awesome. Um, that's really awesome, Kim. I love that. And thank you so much for that cute photo. Kim sent me the, this awesome photo of Tuesday's class of her whole family doing it together. And Kim has just become a grandma. And so the little baby Lucy is her name, I think. Um, yeah, she was like on the mat rolling around with everyone. It was the sweetest thing ever. Oh my god, my heart melted. I haven't heard from Rachel. Actually, that's a really good point. I will reach out to her and I'll let you know how she's doing. Um, one of our instructors, Emily, is in England and they've just been shut down. And I think she um, is kind of blissfully unaware of how bad the situation is there so she's kind of like yeah worst case in the, um worst thing about this is that i've lost my job um but hopefully she starts to become a little bit more aware that her life is also at risk too um anyway i think it's kind of nice that she doesn't really know we're going to sit cross-legged guys we're going to do a little bit of um just mobilizing through your thoracic before we get into this extension work so I want you to just be cross-legged if that's comfortable. If it's not, you could do legs long. If it's not, you could do legs wide. Just, you know, whatever works for your body. Oh, and another thing you could do is sit on your pillow. So you could put that in underneath your bum. It just lifts you up that little bit higher. You want to sit right at the front of the pillow. All right, T-position arms, breathe in. Exhale as you lean over to the right hand side. Keep your left hand coming up and over. Again, if this is not feeling too great on your body at the moment, just keep it small. It doesn't have to be massive. But if you've got the availability to go down and touch your elbow to the floor, then why not? Come back up, breathe in. Exhale over the other side. And inhale to the top. And exhale up and over. And inhale, lift, and exhale either way. One more time, inhale, lift, and then exhale over. And then we'll stay, and we're gonna rotate towards the ground, tap the floor, rotate back up, and behind, and forwards, tap the ground, and back up, and behind, and forwards, tap the ground, awesome. One more time. Nice. And then we'll lift and swap sides. And forwards, tap the ground. And back up, behind. Forwards, tap the ground. 
you know, even though this is really awesome and I'm stoked that we're still managing to do some Pilates together, it does feel so strange. Like, it makes me realize that my favorite part about teaching class is just listening to all your fun stories that you bring to class with you. And it's so um, far and it feels really lonely, like only having my own voice to listen to. It's so boring. Um, I want to go on to our tummies now. So yesterday, or oh, Tuesday's class, I said if you've got the pillow and you have a kyphotic upper back, so that just means that your upper back is a little bit curved forwards like so, you want to put the pillow just underneath your bra, basically, or for men, just like underneath your pecs, essentially, right on the bottom ribs there, and then lie on top of that when you lie down, and it just gives you a little bit of extra support for your body whilst you're lying on your tummy. So we're going to do a little bit of leg lifting and lowering. Um, if you've got a slip disc, sorry, I lost the words, then you don't want anything underneath you because you want your back to be in as much of a nice little natural curve as possible. All right, so what we'll do is we'll have our hands wide and we'll rest on our forehead. I'm just gonna rest to the side so that my voice is slightly more clear, but you should be, hopefully, able to just listen to the sound of my voice and touch your forehead down. Okay, body is nice and relaxed at the moment. We're taking a moment here to breathe in. Then on the exhale breath, we engage your glutes, we engage your abs, and then we squeeze your inner thighs together as tight as we can get them to touch, and then we release. So this will be really good for you too, Marcus, with your hamstring. Exhale as we engage the glutes, then the tummy, and then squeeze the inner thighs together, and then release. So we're gonna do that just five more times. Exhale, squeeze the glutes, tuck the pelvis, get that lift of your tummy off the floor, squeeze your inner thighs as much as you can, and then release. Also really good for you to Kirsty if it's not too sore on your knees resting on this position. Exhale, squeeze glutes, squeeze abs, or lift abs rather, squeeze inner thighs, and release. Two more times. Exhale, squeeze glutes, lift abs, squeeze inner thighs, release. And this is mainly for you, Anna. Exhale, squeeze bum, lift tummy, and inner thighs, and release. Okay, so the next step is to add a lift of the leg. So we're gonna exhale, squeeze the bum, activate the abs, squeeze the legs together, and then lengthen and lift your right foot, place it back down, and lengthen and lift your left leg, place it back down and lengthen to lift the right and back down and then obviously exhale breath is the lift inhale breath is the lower so continue but make sure for me that you haven't dumped your tummy down or pushed your tummy into the floor you're trying to keep it up off the ground and that when your leg lifts you don't drop your tummy into the ground or relax your opposite butt cheek so both butt cheeks should stay working when you're lifting and when you're lowering. It's really important to do the length and away to lift so that you really get your bum and your hamstring to turn on, length and away to lift, rather than um, just lifting straight up because you create more space when you lengthen away. And hopefully I'm not doing this, but I might be slightly. I really don't want to bend my knee to lift my foot higher. I want to try and think about my thigh coming off the ground. Exhale, lengthen, lift, inhale, return. So let's go for two more. Exhale up and return. Exhale up and return. One more time each way and return. Last one and return and relax. Oh, awesome. Have a little shake off. Okay, so upper body now. Hands are by the sides. We are just um, whatever position you want with your legs, like nice and parallel and relaxed. Or you can glue them together if you want to. It's up to you. I always find that a little bit too much for my body. We take a breath in. On the exhale breath, we fire your glutes again. We tuck the pelvis to lift up those abs. 
and then we lengthen the fingertips and lift the head off the ground. You'll be staring at the floor, and then we touch that back down, inhale, breath. Okay, and again, exhale, bum on, abs on, lengthen your fingertips to lift your upper body, and inhale to return. Relax it all. And again, bum on, abs on, lengthen your fingertips to lift, and inhale to return. Good, we've got another five. Bum on, abs on, lengthen and lift, and inhale to return. So I'm just gonna reiterate to you that I'm trying super hard when I lift up, not to push my tummy down into the floor. I'm trying to keep length in my lower back. So I've got this little pocket of air and that determines how high I can come with my upper back because I don't want to push up so high that I just end up sinking my tummy into the floor. Okay, we have one more. Exhale, breath, bum on, abs on, lift and lengthen to lift. And then we'll pulse the arms towards this guy for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and hold, breathe in. Then we'll lift up a little bit higher and then we'll pulse the upper back, up and down. Two, three, four, nice and slow. Five, six, seven, eight. And then we're gonna go back into arms. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and back into upper abs. One, sorry, upper back, two, Three, these ones are slower. Keep thinking about that tummy. Four, three, two, one. One more set. Arms, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and upper back. One, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. And now we'll lower everything and relax it all. Yay, that was awesome. Can we push up onto all fours and just do a couple of happy angry cats for a moment? So I'm gonna hold on my knuckles because I always get really sore in my wrists. Find the length through your spine, take a breath in. And then on your exhale breath, let's droop your tummy first. Let the shoulders draw down your back, try and get extension and then come back. And then for Anna, you just want to keep on doing that position again and again, the back bend one. But for everyone else who doesn't have a slipped disc, you can just keep on moving through both positions. Exhale, drop the tummy, shoulders draw away from the ears. I find my double chin, I'm trying to get my chest to see the front of the room. And then I swap that over, I lift the back, I round up and hang through the head. And again. One more time. Awesome. So let's just take this back into a little shell stretch for a moment, just to stretch. And I can read the comments. Gotta run to a meeting, thanks for this feed. Oh, and all good, thanks Ben. Lovely to see you and I'll send you the video anyway. Yeah, so um, I'm really bad with timing. I think I've probably gone well over. Yep, <laughs> oh well, freebies. Um, so you're just down in the shell stretch taking a couple of deep breaths. And then we're slowly curling the spine back up. Awesome. And then um, this is our, <laughs> you're so welcome, Di. And um, this is our little time to do something specific for injuries. So I'm going to talk through a swan for Anna because I know that she needs that. Um, and then if anyone else had anything that they wanted to, me to target, say it now on the chat. 
um, Marcus, if you're still with us, do a hamstring stretch for me. So if you've got a TheraBand or a belt or something, that's just you're lying on the ground, um, one leg up in the air, have the leg nice and long. If you don't and you can grab your leg, awesome, just use your hands like me. But you have to have a certain amount of flexibility. Um, also, another option for hamstring stretch, if you want it, is this one where we're upright and then we fold forwards over top of your leg. Who else commented? Oh, cool. Thanks, Danny. No worries. Um, yes. Those are the only two people I can think of right now that I need to target because we definitely did glutes anyway. Welcome. Thanks so much, guys. Really lovely to have you join me. All right, I'm talking through swans if anyone wants one last exercise. Hands are underneath your armpits. You're resting on your forehead. Nice and relaxed. Let's take a deep breath in here. On your exhale, we're going to squeeze your glutes and activate your abs and draw your shoulders down your back. Then we're just going to press through the hands to lift only the chest off the floor, but your arms are lifting you up, not your upper back. And then we return, elongating and we release at the bottom. And again, exhale, bum on, abs on, shoulders down. We press and we come slightly higher than the first time. And then we lift the tummy and lower, rest the head release. And again, bum on, abs on, shoulders down, press up a little bit higher this time, inhale. And exhale, slowly lower, lots of weight through your arms and release. Exhale, bum on, abs on, shoulders down, press again, coming a little bit higher again, inhale. Exhale, slowly lower and then release, wobble it all about. Last one, exhale, bum on, abs on, shoulders down, press through the hands. This is the one where we come the whole distance, hopefully, to straight elbows, if you can achieve it. And then we stay here, keep breathing. Welcome, guys. Thanks so much for joining me. Um, so we're just going to really gently twist from side to side. The way I do this is I bend both elbows and just think of shifting my shoulders around the corner. Whilst you're doing it, you really want your bum to be squeezing nice and tight so that you've got lots of um, support for the position. We're gonna go two more times. All right, and then we're gonna slowly lower back down and release when you get there. Oh, awesome. Take a moment just lying on your tummy to let your body relax. Janet, my knees. Oh, what's going on with your knees, Janet? Oh, thank you, Roz. <laughs> yeah, right, Di? Oh my God. Thanks, Phoebe. Good level, not advanced, and balance of strengthening and stretching. Cool. Yay. Thank you, Muriel. Appreciate it. Ah, oh, dumb. Yeah, it's weird. And in the bottom, you can change between like messaging a particular person and me messaging everyone. Um, just so you know. Yeah, it's really good. Hey, Tui. Um, so often when you slip a disc, you will slip it like out one side and not the other. So I find because I have, I think, a slip disc in my lower back at the moment. If I twist over to the right, I feel nothing because it's like really easing the pain. And if I twist to the left, then I do feel something. So I need to keep going the way that feels comfortable again and again. So you should figure out which one was... Um, uh, no worries, Anna. It probably just needs to be a little bit smaller at the moment because you're doing a lot of sitting down. Um, what could you do instead? Instead, you could just take a moment to lie. So if lying feels okay, then that's doing a good thing for your, um, for your disc anyway. But to lie like this with your elbows up in front of you and just breathe into this position. And then I also find if I gently walk my elbows over to my side that I know the disc is slipping out of, then it helps me just get a really gentle curve. Just spending time here and breathing deep breaths into it should help you to relieve the pressure on your lower back and the pain. Just be careful coming in and out of it. Try that out, let me know how it goes. 
You're welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I was going to go back to Janet. So you've got issues around your supporting cat on your knees. Um, so I think, have you got many tools at home, Janet? Do you have a Swiss ball, for example? Um, because for you, you really need to do some quad work, but you need to do some quad work where you're purposefully thinking about lifting the thighs up off the kneecaps, um, which would be good for you too, Kirsty, if you had a Swiss ball. Do you have a small ball instead, like one of these? Welcome, Tui. Aroha nui. Um, yeah, and Kirsty, do you have a small ball like one of these maybe? What else would you maybe have at home? Um, so you could do it without a Swiss ball, technically. Um, but basically, we just need a wall to lean up against. Yes, a small one and an orange one. Cool. Okay, so don't really necessarily need a big one. Just need a wall and a ball of some description. We're going to put the ball in behind your back and then put that up against the wall and then stand in a parallel foot stance. Then before we go anywhere, straighten your knees, engage your quads and lift them up away from your knees. Then take a bend and roll down into your squat. Lift back to the top and relax your legs. Re-engage your quads, lift them up. Really get the length from the top of your head. Keep them engaged as you're rolling down the wall. Keep them engaged and lifted as you're lifting up and then relax your legs. Really important to take the moment to turn them off before you turn them on again. Um, if I face sideways, so what you're trying to do with this is keep your spine really, really upright, not lean forwards or tuck your pelvis. So it's important that we stay neutral from head to sit bones. So we're engaging the quads, lifting them up right from the crown of the head, bending into the knees, lots of weight in my heels. You can notice my toes are lifted. And now my bum is like almost touching the wall, right? Because I'm still neutral. And because you have a lumbar curve here, naturally the ball's gonna sink into that curve, which is fine for it too. One more time, exhale, squeeze and lift the quads off the knees, lift the head, keep the quads engaged as we come down and back up and then turn it off. So give that a go for me and see what you think. You're welcome. Yeah, cool. Awesome, Anna. No, yeah, no worries whatsoever. And those other exercises, the smaller ones where we're relying on our tummy are also enough for you to do just to help ease the pain slightly. Yay, Janet, awesome. So um, if it's still too much to do it on the elbows, stay with those other two exercises, just the lying on your tummy, engaging your glutes, squeezing your inner thighs together, releasing. And the other one with the leg lift and lift. And that, that's enough to start with. Yeah? Cool. All right, guys, I'm going to go eat some lunch now. Thank you so much for joining me. Really nice work. Um, and I will send you this video. Love you. Bye. Mm-hmm. <laughs>